this is a very important update in the Justin Evans case. Justin is still missing and it's now been four months. He is most likely not coming home in the way it was hoped for. And in the last few videos, I've been exposing the truth and information and timelines little by little. There have been strange behaviors, there have been discrepancies in the timelines, and somewhere in all of it lies secrets. A lot of them. There's also been what I believe and know now, a pushing of a timeline. Also, there's been what we thought was a two and a half day delay in calling the authorities. Even a four hour delay on the day of the phone call to the authorities. But today I have some information that potentially makes this case a whole lot more complicated, disturbing, disappointing, confusing, and does in fact push the timeline further, in my opinion. More lies are being told and secrets are being held. The giant question is why and where is Justin? Now before I get into the video, please hit the subscribe button for updates. Also, please share this video out where you can. You never know if this leads to the whereabouts of Justin or a tip that someone can share about Justin and in this case, also a voice for Justin. And giving this video also a thumbs up tells YouTube that you like the video and in turn will get out to more people. So this video, I will cover two parts. One, the new information I received and two, diving into the statement that Justin's best friend from kindergarten, Bud McKinney made about Justin's disappearance. Now a quick recap, Justin lived with his best friend Bud before he went missing. They even worked together and traveled together for work. Justin did not drive. Bud lives with his girlfriend and his parents, who are in fact his biological grandparents. They adopted Bud. So everybody around calls them the parents, but they are in fact his biological grandparents. They are in their 70s from my understanding. Now remember in a previous video, I mentioned Bud's dad's shed. I also mentioned Justin's shed. Justin did not live in the shed. Justin lived in the trailer, just to clear that up. Justin had his own shed where he hung out. He worked on his motorbike, he listened to his audiobooks, and it's just a place for him to go and hang out. Justin's respectful, he's kind, and he's loved. So now, let's get into it. Justin was reported missing on Monday, December 14th, 2020, but he was last seen, according to those in the trailer he lived with, he was last seen on Saturday, December 12th. Since I've been digging, I have found that Justin's been radio silent for at least two days before that Saturday. He was also supposed to go to a birthday party on that Friday night, but never made it and never texted that he wasn't going to show up, which was uncharacteristic for Justin. You can check that video out in the description box below or at the end of this video. Also, no one in his family directly heard from Justin in the days before his disappearance. Now I'm starting to understand a little more as to why it was radio silent. As I mentioned, Justin and Bud worked together. They worked at a place called McLaren Press Graphics. They would work the midnight to 8 a.m. shift together. Now it was said that when they got home, Bud would go directly to sleep while Justin would stay up for a bit and then he would go to sleep. So on Wednesday, December 9th, in the early hours from 12 a.m. to 8 a.m., Justin and Bud worked together and then drove home. It's about a 20 minute drive from McLaren Press Graphics to their home in Kilworthy. Then they were both scheduled to work on Thursday, December 10th from 12 to 8 a.m. Only this time, something is different. Justin doesn't make it into work. He doesn't text his crew boss, he does not call. But there was a phone call, something that's been kept secret from my understanding for quite some time. Bud makes a phone call into work for his best friend. He calls in to work and says that Justin won't make it into work for a shift. Not Justin, who's 22 years old and typically capable of making a phone call or texting, but Bud in fact makes that phone call, saying he won't make it in. Why? Now it's confirmed that Justin's last shift was that Wednesday, December 9th from 12 to 8 a.m. No one knew from my understanding that Bud called in to work that day for Justin, not his family anyway. It's interesting, isn't it? Then after that day, no one from his family hears from Justin, with one exception, a text from Justin's phone that I believe at this point, and pretty darn sure it wasn't from Justin, it couldn't be, but more on that in a moment. And a side note, over the next few days that Justin is radio silent, so is Kiera on social media. She's typically very chatty 
except for these two days. Kiera is Bud's girlfriend, and she makes it very well known that she does not like Justin. And it's definitely not a secret. So same time frame, they both go radio silent, just an observation. So the call went in on Wednesday for that Thursday shift, and then Friday night, Justin was supposed to go to the party, and he didn't make it to it. Saturday morning is when Bud said he last saw Justin, and he waved to him in Bud's dad's shed, which Justin has his own shed that he's been known to use, and it's a little confusing as to why Justin was in Bud's dad's shed. Now, side note, I did ask Kiera, who happened to be in my comments under my video, in my last video and last few videos she's been chatting in there, along with Kiera's mom, I did ask her about the shed, but she does respond to everyone else, just didn't respond to mine. Now, as of this video, perhaps there is one I just haven't checked today. However, there hasn't been a response. Perhaps she missed it. So I'm going to dive back into Bud's statement now, and I'm going to break this down line by line by line. If you have seen my channel before and my videos, you do know that I do go a little bit deeper into the statements. Now that we know some information, I'm diving a lot deeper. Here's what Bud McKinney says. I feel like I have to make a post about everything going on. I waved to Justin, who was in my dad's shed at 7 a.m. on December 12, 2020, as my girlfriend Kiera and I were headed to Barrie for some Christmas shopping with her sister and her boyfriend. So right from the beginning, Bud opens up saying that he feels he has to explain everything. Not that he wants to, but he feels he has to. His line says, I feel like I have to make a post about everything going on. And Bud's dad's shed is thrown in there as well. Now, he says, I waved to Justin who was in my dad's shed. Now, in my opinion, this was thrown in here. Not that it's a fact, because otherwise, in my opinion, Bud would be the last person to see Justin in the shed, and that's not good. Justin's last place he was known to be, and proven to be, was his own shed. As I said, I asked Kiera about the shed, and she didn't respond. Perhaps she will now. We continue on. He says, not knowing that would be the last time I'd see my best friend. My girlfriend and I got home after dropping her sister and her boyfriend off just before dinner that night around 5.30 to 6 p.m. I had asked if Justin was home. My mom said she hadn't seen him since that morning. Now, this is a side note. His mom wasn't sure of what day it was that she saw Justin last. So I wanted to clarify that because when she was asked, she actually questioned herself, was it Saturday that I saw him last? That's important. Back to the statement. For some context, Justin and I worked the midnight shift from midnight to 8 a.m. Mine and Justin's sleep schedules are backwards from one another. He will normally stay awake all morning, then crash whenever he can, and all normally go to bed when we get home and get up around 2 p.m. So for the past few years, it hasn't been uncommon for Justin to sleep through dinner if he's not going anywhere on the weekends, because it's hard to flip your schedule as a midnight worker. Now remember, in the beginning where I said he feels he has to explain everything in a post. So here he goes in detail about the sleep schedule. So according to this last statement, technically for all of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, he wouldn't really see Justin, according to a statement, right? Because Bud says he sleeps from eight to two and Justin sleeps from two to 10. That's been said in another statement. So then Justin would get up, get ready, and then they would go to work for midnight. Now it is my understanding that Justin does go to bed later on in the day. It's also my understanding that he gets up for dinner and then goes back to sleep. And he also lets the household know if he's not going to be there for dinner or if he's going to be visiting people like family. So this statement now explains if Justin was missing dinner, why that would be, right? Let's say Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, no Justin for dinner. Why is that? Well, he was just sleeping. So Bud says, next, the next morning when I got up and seen that Justin still wasn't around, I just assumed he'd gone to his mom's as he does most weekends. No, he doesn't. 
the Justin actually doesn't go every weekend and I've confirmed that yes he visits his family but it's not every weekend or most weekends now where bud says uh, the next morning when I got up he's now meaning Sunday morning and Justin and Bud are due to work that night. And Bud does say that it's really hard to switch sleeping schedules as a shift worker, which I don't disagree. But I am curious because Bud usually goes to bed at 8 a.m. according to him, and now he woke up before 7 a.m. on Saturday to go Christmas shopping, and also he's now waking up on Sunday morning as well. So just an observation. Back to the statement. Justin and I aren't the tell me where you're going or what you're up to every minute of every day type friends. We vent about our problems, hang out and tell jokes to each other. So this is interesting. Justin is the type to say where he's going though and what he's doing. So I, I do believe that Bud doesn't really care about the little details of what a person's up to, but he does know that Justin is like that. And so, for somebody who is best buddies since kindergarten and lives together and also goes to work together, he'd know what Justin's like, right? And when something is off, like not showing up for dinner or texting or going to work together, he would know. I mean, Bud was his bride. He goes on to say, so I wasn't worried about him till Sunday night came around and he hadn't answered my texts. There it is, right? He was worried because he didn't answer his texts on Sunday night. Now, if we just look at the info so far about Justin's phone, Bud is saying Justin didn't text him back and hadn't heard from him when he tried to call him or text him, sorry, until Sunday night. Now, Justin's phone actually sent out a text the day before on Saturday afternoon. It was a text to his mom, an uncharacteristic text, but it was a text to his mom. So Justin texts only on the Saturday afternoon to his mom, or I should say Justin's phone did, but to no one else, not even his best friend. Odd, right? And I can say that with the condition of the shed, there's no way, in my opinion, there's no way that Justin's text would be anything else but help. Instead, it was a short, uncharacteristic text about finding out about getting some Christmas holidays. Bud then says, I went into work to find out that he hadn't called in or texted our crew boss. Justin had joked about taking a long weekend, but for him to not call in or text myself or our crew boss was very strange. Here we are, right? Now we know the information of him calling in days before, almost a week before. And he's giving the information that you can call in or text the crew boss, but yet Bud calls in for Justin. Why? And here Bud is talking about that Sunday night shift, the one Justin missed, but does not clarify or does not offer any of the information of Justin not making it in to that Thursday shift. He says, I went into work to find out that he hadn't called in or texted our crew boss. So he feels he has to explain everything, like he said in his opening line, but noticeably absent is what happened in the days leading up to Saturday. So on Wednesday, why would Bud call into work? Why didn't Justin, or at the very least, why didn't Justin text the crew boss that he wouldn't be in? It's very odd, wouldn't you agree? Instead, Bud calls in and explains why he won't be in. Red flag. Bud goes on to say, Monday morning I called him a few times and it rang through to his voicemail. That made me worry less because at the time I thought all phones worked the same and would only ring through if the phone was on. I also know that Justin could sleep through an alarm even if it was taped to his forehead. So here he's suggesting he only texted up until this point and Monday morning he is now calling Justin and it worried him less even though Justin has not responded, it worried him less because the phone just rang and rang as opposed to the battery being dead. Here's a lot of explanations about the phone in my opinion. Interesting here also about the alarm. I mean, Saturday he did that text when he should be sleeping, really. Because if he sleeps in the afternoon and it's hard to switch his shift and he doesn't wake up really easy, well, 
then he wouldn't be texting his mom at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, technically, would he? So who had his phone that afternoon? But then says, so I tried to get some rest and let him wake up and text me back. So Sunday night, Bud worked, right? He gets home Sunday morning. He calls Justin a few times after his shift, worried less because it just rang and at least it rang. He was a little worried that he didn't go into work, but he goes home, tries him on the phone, does not check his room. He says he tried to get some rest and let Justin wake up and text him back. Here's another question. Why would Bud just let Justin rest if Justin wouldn't be going to sleep until 2 p.m.? You know, because of their shift work. This is Monday morning. Bud says, I couldn't sleep and got up at 12 p.m. and started looking for him. Again, he works the night shift. Justin isn't there. He didn't call in, which isn't like him, but comes home and goes to sleep, worried less because of some reason about the phone, just because it rings and rings and rings and, and notable. No phone call to Justin's family. Bud did not make a phone call. And seems like he's not that worried because he recalls Justin making a joke about going for a long weekend. So he can't be that worried if he just goes home to sleep and wakes up later. But why not look in his room? I mean, knock, knock, knock. Hey, Justin, hey man, everything okay? Nope, straight to bed. And they live in a trailer, it's not big. Bud says, I looked in his room and found his travel bag, charger, and wallet. So after Bud wakes up, he goes and checks on his room finally. When you look at this line though, it suggests no sign of Justin, right? I looked in his room and found his travel bag, charger, and wallet. No Justin. So only his travel bag, and I'm assuming that's the bag that he perhaps uses when he goes to his mom's house. His charger's left behind, notable. Justin's phone is actually missing, so there wasn't a phone there. And Bud says his wallet was also in there. I wonder if his debit card was still in there. And Justin doesn't drive, so to have a travel bag there with a charger and a wallet is odd. Notable. Bud found Justin's sunglasses, though, because two months after Justin went missing, Bud's wearing them on his head. So this just has to be weird for them in this situation. I mean, Justin isn't answering the phone. He's not going to work. It's not like him. He's missing dinner and his stuff is in there. Charger, wallet, travel bag, and no Justin. Bud says, after that, my mom suggested I check his shed to see if maybe he came home and was sitting out there smoking his pot and listening to his book. Remember again, the first line, he feels he has to explain. So he saying here that he didn't come up with the idea to go check Justin's shed. His mom suggested that he go check the shed, just in case he came home after so many days and was sitting out there smoking his pot and listening to his book. Now remember at this point, according to Bud, it's been over two days since he'd last seen him. And remember, Bud also woke up early at noon, not as 2 p.m., the same time that Justin would be going to sleep. He says, I found his shed in disarray and called his parents and the police once they had said he wasn't there for the weekend. I then went asking our neighbors if they'd seen him. I've sadly learned since then that most cell phones ring through so the caller doesn't think they're being ignored. Okay, so let's talk about the shed because I can explain it a little bit better. This shed wasn't just in disarray. There was blood in the shed. And it is true that Bud went and asked a few people about Justin. But from my understanding, the only thing that should have been done once the shed was seen was call 911. But that didn't happen. That didn't happen for four hours. In fact, I'm not even sure if a 911 call was made or if it was just a call into the police station. He also says here that he called Justin's parents, but that's not quite what happened. Bud's mom, or I should say biological grandmother, called Justin's grandmother to ask if she's seen Justin. Justin's mom, Jamie, finds out that Justin's nowhere to be seen. She leaves work. She heads towards the trailer. She talks to Glenna, who is the biological grandmother, or Bud's mom. And when asked if the authorities were called, no one called the authorities yet. So there's a four hour gap. So four hours go by from the time that Bud woke up to go look for Justin 
to the time that it was actually called in. I would love to hear that phone call and I'd also love to know the exact time it went in and who made the call. Tell me why there's a four hour gap. Tell me why there's a two and a half day gap. Tell me why there's potentially a five day gap. Bud says, Justin and I, we're like brothers. We help each other through from family stuff to weird bodily functions, it didn't matter. Justin years ago jokingly adopted the saying, we're the best effing friends and that means your BS is my BS and my BS is your BS. We would remind one another about that even years later, especially when one of us noticed something was wrong with the other. Justin and I have known each other since kindergarten. That's 16 years I've had the amazing opportunity to call him my best friend and have had the privilege of him calling me his best friend. Now, this was written just over a month since Justin was reported missing in January. Like I said earlier, if you've been friends with someone for that long, you would know when something is off. And that whole week seems off according to timelines, except to Bud, until days later. And well, Kiera as well. He says, Justin never seemed off the week leading up to that day, other than he'd made a mistake and hurt himself on a snowmobile the weekend before and was hurting quite a bit. Now, I do want to point out a few things in this. Bud says he never seemed off, right? And I'm sure that was true. Something was off, just not Justin, in my opinion. Interesting language, he says that Justin made a mistake and hurt himself. It is my understanding that Justin did get hurt the weekend before. Uh, he was on a snowmobile at his family's place and he hit the throttle a little too hard or something like that and jolted back and he did hurt himself a little bit. Nothing to go to the hospital about, but he hurt himself a little bit and was a little sore. Bud says it never mattered what it was, Justin and I would push through it together, whether it was kindergarten spelling bees, learning to drive or family problems. We had each other's backs and would help one another stand. We'd never let the other fall, no matter how hard it got. This is a little disappointing here, or a lot disappointing, because I don't think he had his back that week, in my opinion. It's not looking like it. There's secrets here, and I think the right thing to do, I know the right thing to do is come forward. Especially if something happened, he's your best friend or was your best friend, and for some reason, there's a whole lot of untruths. So there needs to be clarification because Justin needs to come home to his family. Now comes his rant. So for some of you pieces of SHIT to go running to the damn cops and Facebook telling people I might have killed Justin with no better reason than I think or I heard when you barely know us is an effing joke. You're pathetic, F you. You walk around claiming you know something. You barely, not barely, you barely know your head from your, from your butt. Notable. That is interesting. I do find that interesting when he goes off on a tangent. He continues now calmly. If you know something helpful like where you might have seen him, please go to the OPP, Crime Stoppers something. Now, this is a confusing statement to me. Bud would know where he was last seen, especially the condition of the shed, and he was last seen in a shed. So where else would someone have seen him? And the last place beside the trailer that anyone has seen him was at work and Bud was his ride home, and Justin doesn't drive. And on Saturday morning, Bud says he was the last person to see him, and he admits that. Just the wrong day, in my opinion. Bud says, there are dozens of links for anonymous reports, and I've heard there is money for anyone who brings forward any information about him that helps find him. I sure hope there hasn't been false tips called in. He says, please, I've walked around our area and talked to some people but no one seems to know anything. If it was a vehicle or people that seemed out of place around then, please say something. It doesn't matter if it was in the Kilworthy area, Gravenhurst, Aurelia, Bracebridge, it doesn't matter if it was a weird vehicle or persons. Now, what's interesting here, again, is the pushing away from the actual home, but what's interesting here is that when you put this in the maps of all these places he mentioned, it's actually the places that they visited on the Saturday. They went through all these places. Interesting, isn't it? Now, he says, please, it only takes a moment for a call or email that might bring an end to what's been a very long and hard month for his family and friends. 
Again, please, any information that could bring him home would be greatly appreciated. I'm tired of the theories. I want the facts. Have you seen or heard anything or even been somewhere you think he might be? Thank you to everyone who's giving helpful information. Without you, we'd be no closer to having answers. Now, I have three things that stand out to me here. It's been a very long and hard month for his family and friends. That's what Bud says. Bud's tired of the theories and wants the facts. And the third one is, and has anyone heard anything or even been somewhere you think he might be? So my question is, and it's a natural one at this point, is Bud trying to have people look away from the fact that Justin was last seen in his shed? That same goes for Saturday. So much detail about Saturday from both Bud and Kiera, yet something very important is missing, and that's the secret that he called in for Justin on Wednesday. Why? And more importantly, why didn't Justin just call for himself or text himself, right? Or text, right? As for Bud saying that he's tired of theories, well, that bothers me. I don't know Justin. I've never known Justin. And I'm not tired of the theories. I'm trying to get to the actual truth and you have to sort it out. I'm a total stranger to Justin. His family isn't tired of the theories either. They want Justin to come home. Theories can lead to Justin coming home. Why would your best friend be tired of the theories? Notice, he's just trying to get to the actual truth. He didn't say he just wants his buddy back. It's a fact. Now, I pointed out what's in this statement, right? But I also want to note what's not. For something that he feels the need that he has to explain things in this post, we don't hear anything about their week together. What they did together, what they talked about together, nothing. Only that Justin made a mistake and hurt himself, that they came home together from work, that he saw Justin in a different shed on Saturday morning, and he was barely worried until Monday morning. He waited four hours after when he found the shed in disarray. And like I said, it's not even clear at this point who called 911 or if it was 911 or just the police station because it certainly didn't seem like a hurry and it should have been. And I want to reiterate this. The last anyone other than Bud and company who saw Justin was on Wednesday morning. And if this is the day that something happened to Justin, which it's looking to be more probable, then that means that Justin wasn't reported missing until five and a half days later, almost a week later. Why? What happened in that shed? What events occurred or conversation occurred that led to what happened in that shed? What happened that Justin couldn't call work on his own? Who's all involved? And why is a best friend lying? Why did Justin's phone text out in response to his mom? but didn't respond to a party that he missed or respond to his best friend? And why was that text that was sent uncharacteristically short and didn't even seem like Justin? And where's his phone? And I asked in previous videos about the timeline and why it was pushed so hard about that Saturday. And in my opinion, now I know why. That Saturday was pushed potentially because that's the day that two other people who weren't living in that house could confirm an alibi and push the timeline so they wouldn't look before that day. And not one person can confirm to me that they've seen Justin on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday other than when he got off work that morning. No one offers it. So I know Kiara's watching I'm, I'm pretty sure because she comes to the comments and she knows what's going on in the videos. So, but if you're watching, I think you're a little different than Kiara. Maybe you're teetering. Maybe you're keeping quiet because he was your best friend and something happened. I don't understand the glasses. I don't think anybody understands the glasses and I know you gave them back. But if you're watching and you want the family to stop going through hell because that's what they're going through, then just explain why you lied about the phone call. 
and explain why the timeline doesn't add up and explain why it took you four hours to call in and five and a half days to report your best friend missing. Maybe you didn't have his back then, but maybe you can fix that and have his back now. If you have a tip in the Justin Evans case, please call. You can call Crime Stoppers. I'll have the number in the description box below. It's just a matter of time before the truth comes out. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Please like and please share. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.